Hey guys, this is Game of Cow. We are playing Toho 11 Subterranean Animism. and we're going into the extra stage after the elation of my first time 1cc on Lunatic Mode. That's pretty awesome. Um, story wise, we're going into the Moira Shrine because Utsuho told us that a mountain god kind of gave her Yatagrazi to eat. Mountain gods, there's only really one place that you're gonna go from that, so we're off to beat them up. Um, I would love to use Marissa for this, despite how weird her hand looks, but I would love to use Marissa for this, she's just not good enough at this extra stage. Marissa A is terrible because of the reverse focus ability, and Marissa B just doesn't have enough power to warrant using Marissa. I have done it in the past, but it's not easy at all, it's just not great. Um, I would use Suika, like shot type, and I, I probably should just because um, Suika is my favourite shot type, but I can't really use Aya. I have cleared it barely, but I can't use Aya shot type, and so I'm actually just going to go ahead and use Yukari's one. Yeah, it's broken ass, it's the most powerful, blah 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 blah, but I think it's worth it because I didn't use it for the main game. That's my justification at the moment. I didn't use it for the main game, I didn't use it for my lunatic clear, so I'm going to go ahead and use it for this. Now, as you can see, like my thing here, the um, the shot type does sort of rotate around, which makes it a little bit inconsistent. I'm just not quite used to the power here, so I don't end up doing very well with it, which is sort of annoying, because I really needed to kill that fairy there. And can I still... No, I can't still do it. Okay, so yeah, lesson learned. I've got to be better with Yukari shot type. So yeah, the song... Oh, pfft. For some reason I didn't move enough. The song is called Last Remote, and it's rather different from most of the extra stages. I guess it's kind of closer to... Um, or maybe it's just like a hybrid between the two usual styles of extra stage song that we get. Because usually we either get like super chipper ones like uh, Charming Domination or um, Extend Ash, or we get ones which are very laid back like um, Tomorrow Was um, Special or. Uh, wow, I am really terrible with this shot type. You can sort of see though that um, the, uh, the bullets, the, the needles are kind of going off of the fairies. It doesn't have as much power on these fairies as a uh, Suika shot type would. Because even when you're dead center on them, the needles are not always hitting. I guess it sort of fits Yukari's lazy ass style, to be honest, but it's really irritating. And wow, I am like not trying very hard at the moment, am I? If I'm getting killed by that, how can I go from doing lunatic mode like first time to failing this so terribly? It doesn't make any sense, man. Like, I shouldn't be this bad at this type thing right here. Whatever. Just trying to get the auto collect for the stuff, because yeah, now I've got two power. This should go a reasonable bit more smoothly. Yep, just like navigate down. You don't get very much power in the first half of this stage, so that's why I'm trying to, like, kill absolutely everything, because you can't afford to miss a single one of those sunflower fairies. I mean, do you only get, I think, 4.2 power during the, the stage itself, and because it wasn't nice enough to give you power, it sort of, yeah. Anyway, this, this bit's actually really annoying when I'm not using the Suika shot type, because for some reason it just... Well, yeah, it's because I can't quite get close to the enemies again. That was very, very tight. I probably should have died to that, but yay for hitboxes and stuff. I don't know. Yeah, I don't like this shot type, I'm just going to put it out there right now. Anyway, Sanai! Sanai is here because it's the Mario Shrine, of course it's Sanai's hideout, so... Well, it's technically not a hideout, but whatever. Um, this spell, once you realize that if you stay rooted to the bottom center, it's a safe spot from the lasers, it's very easy. I know some people go one laser up and, yeah, just sit there, but it's... yeah, it, it's fine. You just do it however the hell you want, basically. This attack used to give me a lot of trouble, but nowadays it's not quite so bad. I mean, these needle like waves, I guess, or needle, um, I don't know what you would call them, but they're like arrows of needles or something. They used to give me a lot of problems, but not so much now. And here, this is probably her hardest spell because it's a little bit of random, but 
just try and restream into the open spot. So remember, you actually have quite a bit of time to do restreaming, so it's not too hard. I quickly get the items, and this section, well, you can gap hacks it, but there's a better way of doing it. If you just go up there, you are able to skip this along. If you're very good, you can also POC that, or not POC, but you can also graze to get the items there, but I'm not quite so good at that. This section's kind of fun, although Reimu A really trivializes this, to be completely honest, because she's just way too powerful, but it's fine. Then we go back to the maze down Marku before. This stage really does abuse Graze. It's like, this is probably the main reason why Marissa is not so good at this, is because pretty much this, this stage, much like this game in general of course, this stage abuses Graze to all hell. I think the reason that this game is so Graze happy is because people like moaned that Mountain of Faith got rid of the Graze counter and stuff. So Zuma's like, okay, if people want Graze so badly, let's make it the main focus of the game. And that's why Subterranean Animism was born, and that's why it's so friggin' hard. Anyway, um, yeah, where is the idiot? Blah blah blah. Yukari is just being Yukari. Uh, Hell Ravens or Kanako's fault, so yeah, trying to take over the underground? Not exactly, but that's a spoiler, so we won't say that. And hey, it's another Satori! And she has a closed eye. I like the buttons on her shirt though, they look kinda cool. Her hat's also kind of weird, but anyway, um, yeah, Shrine Maiden's looking for her own god, that's kind of funny. Her expressions are weird, like the heart and stuff like that up there is kind of weird. But yeah. She is Koichi Komeji. Another Komeji, yes. She is the sister of Satori. And she has the ability to manipulate the subconscious, because she closed her third eye. Basically, Koishi was um, saddened by how her sister got so much hate because of her mind reading, and she decided to go under the very painful process of closing her third eye. I don't understand how that gives her the ability to manipulate the subconscious, but it does. And yes, bad feeling, blah blah blah, beaten by a vicious empty-headed shrine maiden. Thank you, that is exactly what Reimu is, right there. <laughs> read hearts and stuff. No! Already closed the eye of enlightenment. So it actually has a name as well. I don't know, it's kind of weird. Yeah, there we go. So, Vemu is happy about that, but, uh, wants, yeah, she wants to disappear, but Koishi, with her amazing music, is kind of just gonna go, no, we have to fight, and fight we will. Koishi is weird. I think technically she is among the harder, maybe even the hardest of the uh, extra bosses. However, she is also the most learnable. Pretty much everything that she does is static. So you can learn how to do it. There is almost no randomness in this fight. And I think that's probably because of her um, because of her like subconscious manipulation sort of thing. Anyway, um, that first non-spell I really don't like, but Reimu A is kind of Reimu A. Second non-spell, um, people do like do it to the side, that, that wave thing there. I used to do the, the streaming of that to the side, but when I started doing no focus runs of this stage, I had to do it up the center because it was too, too difficult to get the precision otherwise, so I now do it up the center all the time. Differences in playstyles. Anyway, um, the other thing that was hard about this extra stage is that you don't get very many resources until you actually fight Koishi herself. And, well, here we go with a classic Psych Out card, and the best part of the music coming up at the Psych Out card, this is awesome. If you move too fast you're gonna get killed by the kunais, but you don't have to move very fast at all, or very far for that matter. Just move once in a while and it's perfectly fine. People make the mistake of moving too often during this card and ended up having to move like every single circle set. Whilst it's still not hard even if you do that, it is a bit of a waste of effort, so try not to do that, basically. Anyway, I haven't really been talking much about the non-spells. The initial set all sort of follow this kind of pattern here. This one gets ugly when Koishi moves to the, um, to the right, but it's still not too bad. With a little bit of unfocused movement, it's fine. And now, Release of the Id. This used to be one of my more hated cards, but it's really not that bad. There's a decent, uh, decent, like, gap 
set in the hearts, I suppose, and uh, you've just got to move upwards into the gaps. The hearts have circular shaped hitboxes, not heart shaped hitboxes, so that's fine. Just don't force your, get yourself forced too far down the screen, and it's really straightforward, to be honest. So yeah, something like this, and I'm not actually getting very much damage done to Koishi here because I'm not staying under her very well. This would be over by now if I was using Reimu B because of the guided aspect to her shot type. But it's it's all good, it's not that hard a card to do anyway, so whatever. This non-spell I don't like. Uh, I don't know why, but this and the first non-spell I just don't agree with. I can't... Um, I can't like consistently do this with other shot types, but with Remu B, it's like Remu B, whatever. Um, for this attack, it's a pattern-based thing at the start, so just like uh, sort of get into get into the pattern, and then when it starts, just pure horizontal movement. And my computer is lagging for some reason when doing that; it's kind of weird. But yeah, pure horizontal movement is really not a hard attack as soon as you get started on it, and this is pretty much how it goes. Yeah, very easy. Um, fun fact about this music, it is actually like the same song if you play it backwards as well. It's a really, really good com you know, composing piece there. Very, very nice. Anyway, Koishi has a second survival card as well. So her first survival card comes up as the fifth card of the fight. This is a really, really good card. It used to, it used to catch me all the time because I didn't know how it worked, but pretty much if you stay in the same uh, plane, it, it's kind of hard to say, but the, the laser traces out these needles, which is based on your movement. If you move slowly, then you're going to get trapped by the needles. So the idea is that you dash at every like corner and going back into the middle, and that lets you create holes in the thing. The polygraph is a classic like lie detector that basically is the opposite of what it actually says it is. Like if it tells you you're lying, then you're probably telling the truth. So that's why you lie and you move in a direction, and it's all awesome. This non-spell, do it unfocused. There's not really any reason to try and do this one with focus movement. It's not that possible. I don't think you're, you're just more likely to get yourself walled, so don't bother. And this is where Reimu C is really terrible, because Aya shot type is not good at that. Anyway, Roshark in Don Maku. I hope that's how you say Roshark there. It's a tricky card. I've never been any good at this one. It's probably my um, worst card of the entire fight, because I'm just like horrible. You don't want to stay down the bottom and do what I did there because it doesn't work. And yeah, I can ram my face straight in a purple bullet because I'm bad at this game. Um, yeah, I'm just not very good at this attack. It is technically a sort of survival card. You will get a spell bonus if you time it out, but good luck actually doing that. I don't know. But whatever, if you don't die at it, you'll get the life piece and stuff. That non spell is not really much to say about that. Embers of Love, on the other hand, this is my favorite spell card of the fight. It's a fantastic concept for an attack, I guess. I don't know, I just really, really love the way this one plays out. It's sort of tricky, it's not like the hardest card ever. You can manipulate the way that Koishi goes, so even this is not really random as such. So yeah, just try and uh, get her to go in a pattern that you are comfortable with, and it's a pretty straightforward attack. It does get pretty dense though, so good peripheral vision is needed for that one. And then this, this is the same non-spell as the last one, but it's actually easier because it's a more defined pattern. The last one wasn't exactly hard either, so whatever. And then we get to the spell known as some genetics of the subconscious. A lot of people hate this attack. I don't find it to be that bad, but I don't play it as... Um, like, I could play it better than I do. Because every time that there's a charge-up sound, like right now, Koishi um, moves towards you. So you can abuse that to get more shot time on it, but I don't because I'm not used to doing it that way. And I death bomb because I'm dumb. Whatever. Um, yeah, that, that happens sometimes. Never mind, we are going to continue anyway. It's, it's only really tricky when you're forced to go up the screen, but even that, I guess it, it, I guess it really depends on how your vision is. I've never been... I've never been one to say that going up the top of the screen is a bad thing. Like, I'm... 
I'm one of those where I tend to be either good or terrible at something regardless of where I have to go for it, so if I have to be at the top of the screen then that's okay, I'm usually fine with that. Oh well, whatever. Uh, survival second card thing, a lot of people hate this one as well, which is kind of ironic because of the name, but if you have a set like idea as to how to do it, it's really not too bad. For the first bit, make sure that you end up in the top left hand corner, it makes the second wave a lot easier, so just do that. And then for this, now because of moving her into that corner, she's going to go down the screen and in a U shape. So you want to follow like the bullets across and now go back along. I guess it's it's kind of, I'm not really being very descriptive here, but it's not too hard to do. And then the third wave is technically the hardest. The bullets don't, as much as it looks like they're crossing, they, um, you know, like they're moving in a diagonal, they're really only moving in a vertical line. So try and not force yourself into this corner like I've done here. It's a very bad I because you can get killed by Koishi there. I am very lucky I didn't get killed there. Anyway, not that hard a card to be completely honest. And because of that one death at Rorschach, I've uh, not got the max lives that you can get in this stage. Sad face. Anyway, Subterranean Rose, if you're feeling really cheap, uh, you can time this card out. I think it's about the longest card in all of Toho, actually. It's a massive 190 seconds to time this out. However, it does not have a timeout phase. So if you're feeling really cheap, that first wave is very, very easy. Just time that out. However, it's not that hard a card anyway. It's definitely not anywhere near as hard as uh, QED or Grudge Bow or stuff like that. This set here just dodge like three waves, like go up through three waves and then go down one. You could go up four if you want, but it's not necessary. Just do that, and that should clear it. And then the last one, it's alternating between safe spots. The um, the red rows and the blue rows alternate like when they come down, so just work your way into alternating red and blue safe spots and you will be okay. As I said, really not that hard. Mind you, of course I was using uh, Remu A, but it's not that hard with any shot type, really. <laughs> of course Raymu's not ordinary, she's a shrine maiden. Yeah, why looking for the gods and stuff? Well, basically, Koishi caught wind from Aku of the same thing that we did. So, Koishi pretty much got told about the, the whole thing of she got a sun god from the mountain and Hey, Suaku is here. How are we doing? Yeah, Kanako, Kanako, Kanako is on a, on a shopping trip. Do gods really do shopping? <laughs> um, this is Koishi. Yeah, from hell. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hoping to get something for the gods for. Oh, she ha yeah, she has pets as well. I don't know anything about the pets for her, but whatever. Um. Up to something in the underground, da di da di da. Mountain Industrial Revolution. Yeah, the reason that uh, Kanako gave Aku the uh, Yatagrazu was because she wanted nuclear fusion to be a part of the Kappa like society in the mountain. Yeah, because they used to better. Because, you know, they came from the outside world and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, technical, da, 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 atomic energy stuff, yeah, dangerous stuff and things, and basically, yeah, tell everybody about it, whatever. Yeah, we did well. <laughs> yeah, so Yukari knows everything, and therefore she doesn't care anymore. Yes, we are done talking. Gloomy power of love, that's unsettling. Anyway, stage done, new high score, yay. Um, only one fail at the fight itself, I guess. Or technically two fails, because I failed genetics as well. Bit of a sad face. I'm usually good enough at genetics nowadays, but I guess I showed the main way of how I go about doing it. And yeah, that was Let's Play Subterranean Animism. Sorry it took so long to come out. I mean, I 
should have had this done a long, long time ago, but lots of stuff happened, and yeah. As for UFO, I don't know yet. I obviously want to do it, but I haven't cleared Lunatic on it yet, and I don't know if I want to go back and do hard on it now. You know, because I've just done what a lot of people consider to be the hardest game on Lunatic. It would almost be a fallacy to go back and do hard on that now, but I haven't done... I haven't cleared Lunatic yet on that, so I wouldn't be able to do a Let's Play of it. So I think once again I might have to... Well, I guess I'll let you guys decide that way. Do you want me to just actually do a Let's Play of it and just do hard, or would you want me to try and... Uh, almost if you like go on hiatus again whilst I practice Lunatic and see if we can do that. Because I'm not sure. Like, right now, I can't do Lunatic, but I might be able to do it if I practice it enough. Yeah, a lot. I almost had it before, I could probably get it again if I really tried. So I'll leave it up to you guys. Do you want me to do that, or do you want me just to play hard and get another Toho Let's Play done? And just leave Subterranean Animism as the black sheep at the moment, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, this has been Gamer Car playing Subterranean Animism once again, and join me next time for something else.